Hello again everyone, I am Pablo Linares and today we're going to discuss one of the most frequent issues the 412 has since they came out, mass seal leak. For the history of the whole 412, classic 412, SP, HP, EP, EPI, this is, we could say that's the most frequent question I have on the training I do, but also issues the Bell helicopter itself has on this helicopter. You can search it out and you're going to find out how many bulletins they have done regarding uh, uh, this leak on the mast. Uh, I will try to emphasize the differences between the one before the latest one, which is the one double lip seal, and the latest one is a single lip seal. Also, I will try to uh, give you a more insight of the process for one of the bulletins, a TV, and all the issues that's going on on that particular one. And I hope you enjoy, and uh, let's right on to it. In here, you can see pretty much everything that is part of the mast. Now, on this specific picture, you're gonna see pretty much uh, the mast for the 412 HP, the old one, or if, if you already have bulletin, they have the new one, where instead of being bonded into it, it's gonna be uh, riveted into the lower side of the mast. This is all the, uh, the reference, reference gear. Uh, this mask here is the one that came out on the 412 EP, but also it's a bulletin that you can add it on into the HP. Matter of fact, if you have the old one where it's going to be bonded, this mask has to be sent out to Bell in order to calibrate. The new one, the latest one, uh, I don't going to go in detail on it. That's going to be, uh, you can find all this information if we do some training for you guys. Again, you can visit our webpage www.htiglobal.us and you're going to see through the courses uh, tab pretty much everything we offer. Uh, I need to emphasize that uh, we offer overhaul training on the medium group. That means 212, 205, 412, now including Huey 2. So uh, if we're going through the training uh, for the overhaul, we're going to go into every single component that's part of the mast. Uh, we do in practice, we disassemble and assemble pretty much. Also, we have the theory section of the training. So if you think uh, you need any uh, special training on your helicopter, you can contact us for more details and information. Now, going back to the mast, uh, the process we're going to be discussing on this class will be only for field maintenance. So everything you see here, you can disassemble as you see here on field maintenance practices. The only thing you can do on the field maintenance side of it could be remove this the torque tube. This torque tube in the bottom side, you're going to have what we call the signal gear. And also the bottom part is going to be the reference gear. This reference gear, the new one, this is the old one, the new is riveted, the old one is bonded. These are uh, called reference, uh, reference gears. So, so this cannot be removed in the field. They have some process, but this too, it is. You can remove it in the field. Uh, the other part you can remove in the field will be uh, the retainer. This retainer where you're going to have the seal and also you're going to have the lock for the bearing, for the, I'm sorry, for the nut. This nut here, just to remove it, uh, you need a special tools that will cost a lot of money and really this is not a process for film maintenance uh, process. So in our this class we're going to start discussing pretty much because related to the leaks talk about the locking, the seal and the retainer caps. So all this training we're doing for you on this uh, video is going to be pretty much for film maintenance and replacement of the mass seal. We're going to go into it uh, on the next slide. The first thing we're going to do 
is to remove the mask from the helicopter. Uh, in order to do this, few things you need to take in consideration. Of course, in order to get to this point, you have to have you have to remove already the main rotor and the thrust plate in order to reach uh, the mask to be removed. First thing, we're going to have the the old gen number A, which is the lubricating uh, device for the uh, duplex bear we have inside the mask here, and you're going to have a flex line. The flex line, if you see it over there, you get a cap over there. But this one, you just remove the, the, the flex line and you're going to cap it off so nothing gets inside of it. This device here is the temperature bulb and this is only going to be found on the 412 HP, EP and EPI. This is not part of the mask that is installed on the 412 Classic and SP. So if you have it, uh, make sure you're going to remove from uh, the uh, the retainer right here before you continue. Besides that, I like to uh, give you a little bit of information every single time you remove the mast. This uh, knot, under the knot you're going to find two types of washer. One is aluminum, one is steel. You have to remember the retainer is made of aluminum, so the first washer is going to be touching, which is the aluminum, is going to be touching the retainer, and the steel washer is going to be touching the knot. So when you remove all the nut and the washers, you're gonna go ahead and install two nuts 100 degree apart. I don't know, I don't care where, where you're gonna do it, but I do it 100 degree apart. And you're gonna screw all the way down, or torque it down all down, but I leave a little gap, just enough that you can see any movement. Now, this is something that is a very good advice. You don't have to do it, but you can heat it up right here. You're gonna put a heat lamp or a heater, a heat gun, and you're gonna heat it up. If you don't heat it up and you remove all the knot, what happens is you, and it happened already, we start lifting uh, the hoist to remove the mask. Everything comes with that, including the helicopter, but because too much weight, and uh, very suddenly, the mask is going to come out of the top case. And guess what? When it's coming down, it will not come down the same way. And what happens is you're going to damage a lot of stuff. And that is why I was telling you, you're going to leave two knots screw all the way down but it was a little bit gap so when you start seeing this separating here it tells you that now the mask is coming out of the top case so you can remove the two knot and continue with the hoist lifting it uh, the mask out of the top case in that way you are making sure that uh, nothing's gonna surprise you remember everything you're doing here is very expensive and it's very easy to damage anything here when you are Pulling the mask out of the transmission, you have to remember to wear glove. Below this line, when you start lifting this out, nothing down here on the mask can be touched with the hand. It's a raw metal. It will corrode very easily. So make sure that when you start lifting it out, you got gloves on it so you can guide it and help to remove the mask out of the transmission. This is the picture what I, what I was telling you is a raw metal from here down you cannot touch it with your bare hands and this could be this section here this is a cutout that's why it'll look shorter but it pretty much it's a long part of the mask and this section here is gonna corrode very easily so you be careful if you're gonna leave it overnight make sure you protect it against corrosion you can use CPC or any other product to make sure that no no humidity or anybody touch it because you can cause corrosion and you have to remember if you have a very invasive corrosion or damages and you have to do a repair or rework, the mask by itself can allow only one repair. If I have to do a second repair or rework and I found right in the bottom here on an overhaul, we just write down the word rework. If this mask already have one rework and you have to do another one, it's not allowed. The whole mask uh, post is going to be throwing it out. When I say the whole mass, I'm not talking about bearing and everything, just the post. The post only allows one repair. When you get the mass out, the, out of the helicopter, you're going to have, you're gonna have uh, uh, the locking uh, rim that would lock the knot in place. This knot is the one to preload the inner races of the bearing. On the same time, also is the surface for where the bearing runs into it. 
and this is the worst slip. We're gonna talk about this in a moment. When you remove these four screws from here, uh, before you pop this out, uh, make sure you clean all the proceeds. You're gonna have a lot of proceeds here, make sure it's all clean, and you're gonna make two references. You can make it with a marker. Uh, don't use any scrap, nothing. Just a uh, marker, uh, a Sharpie. You use a Sharpie, make two lines here to guide each other, and the reason for it, this locking rim, this locking rim have splanting on it. So when I install it, I can turn it around to align the hole with the nut. So that is why you want to make your job easier when you're going to resemble. You don't have to be guessing. You install it the way it is here to guide. So it will have no guessing. Uh, this not, this locking have many positions and uh, it takes some time when you're doing this in overhaul. For field maintenance, really, you you don't have to do anything. Just make a reference. So you're going to put it the same way as you did it. But you have to remove it in order to remove the retainer. And when you're doing this, it's for replacing the uh, uh, seal, the guardlock seal. Another thing that after we remove the retainer, one thing you have to go on the other side, and that's the key reason why we have to remove the mask. We're going to see here, let me see if I have a. You're going to see this a small kind of sawn screws. You're going to have four, two here, two on the other side. And if you look at it, it's pretty nasty right now. They got to maybe have some residue. It seems like I hear they put proceed, which you're not supposed to put proceed between the liner and the top case anyway. But when you have these screws, you're trying to unscrew them. Sometimes the filler or the, the screwdriver kind of slip on you and it start getting rough here. So you have to make sure that uh, if you're going to remove them, my advice is, it's not mandatory, it's an advice, put a new screws in here, you're going to have four. Now, why I want to advise you this is because of this. When you put the top, the mask back into the top case, this is something, this is the surface where it's going to be, and I like, let me blow it off for you for a moment to show you what I mean. This screws head is going to be touching the top case you're gonna have there here there and there so these four spots you see in there just in mind for one second the screws the caterson screws are damaged and they are not uh, flush it's kind of uh, rough because of the screwdriver and this top case is made of aluminum so what happened is you start doing this bad practice you really can damage the top case so make sure when you finish and you go back here make sure you can put your finger through here and I smooth and normally this is supposed to be kind of a under the surface so it will be a flush or under but never extending out remember the countersunk in aviation we have different degrees make sure you don't grab anything you look at it make sure the part number is correct when you replace them. This is a cutaway from the old system. This is the double lip seal, as you see here. Seal part number 412-340-001-101. This is the old one uh, in which, as you can see here, kind of uh, kind of hard to see, you see that little uh, yellow and red dot. That's the uh, spring on the outboard lip. And on the other side, you can see on the bottom, let me see if I can give you a better guide here you can see right there the lower spring of the lower seal and this is the spring of the upper lip seal this seal the old one the 101 the one we're just talking about this is a double lip seal and this having issues like a, in the past it has issue uh, I hope this time they fix it let's move on and talk about this but this is the old one okay one of the things that I, when I was in Bell, uh, we were about three instructors. We have a meeting with engineer and everything, how to solve the issue of this mass seal leak. And really, uh, I'm not an engineer, I'm just a mechanic. And I believe all this fixing they're doing is never going to be a, a real fixing on this. One of the things you notice it, this mass compared to the 412, to the 212, I'm sorry. Yeah, different sizes, but here it's very similar. The big difference between 
the 212 412 is that the 212 only got one ball bearing this is a double or duplex now this have two type of bear two bearings here now also the location where they all get into the bearing is going to be right here in the angle where on the 212 the plate is longer and they all go this way now this angle on the on the retaining plate is going to be affected by chimps so depending on the chimps are going to have different setting what i'm meaning with this if you have a water hose and uh, when you're trying to press the water hole like this, you can increase the pressure. So depending on it is, it's going to cause more problem. So my humble opinion, why the leak on the 412 mass seal is because back pressure build up. On the 212, we don't have the same issues we have on the 412. Uh, I do remember working in PS Shadow on 212, and we never had that major problem as we have we every time for many, many years we have on the 412. So this is an advice that uh, um, even though they're trying to fix the problem, uh, I just asking around a few days back about this new seal we're gonna be talking about. And it seems that it's still seeping oil, but uh, it's not pouring oil or leaking a great amount of oil like it happened with this seal. Now, uh, this new seal is not mandatory in a bulletin, so really it's up to the operator to replace the seal or not. If you're still using the double lip seal, that's fine. So we're gonna also try to talk about this. And again, anything that uh, you think I'm not covering on this video and you want more information, please write down on comments and I'm more than happy to reply to you or if it's a lot of people complaining about this or they got more information or need more information i can even create a different video for you guys now this is a video i'm going to show you later and this is a retaining array rare remove this marking is pretty bad do you know what that is what caused that that is the shape of the sauce plate support on top of this. This sauce plate support on the 412 is made of stainless steel. And this is a very good sample of fritting. What happened is whoever installed the sauce plate was not paying attention in torquing values or maybe they didn't pay attention when doing daily inspection. But everything uh, around this retainer uh plate is all worn out freighting it's pretty bad so this is something that uh when you do your post fly or pre-fly whatever you're doing it one thing that you're going to see when you have free like this is that everything around is going to be black making mud very dirty and that very specific color is going to be very dark black color that right there should open you're concerned that something is wrong, something is loose. Every time you have freighting, you're gonna cause that kind of a black mud coming out, and that means problems. This particular case, I mean, they didn't care about when I got, I did this job last year, and this is, you can feel a step here. It was pretty bad. Uh, anyway, let's continue with this. Now, the oil seal, this one, I'm talking the oil, the, the old seal, but you again, you can keep using it if you don't want to do the bulletin. This is a double lip seal. You're going to see, I'm going to talk about this. Every time you're doing this, uh, a few years back, Bell uh, came up with an, uh, work aid. the work workade is over there, and uh, give you an in instruction how to make it on the bulletin, technical bulletin 412-96-137. You have to remember the middle numbers, 96, means the year they came out with that bulletin. That means in 1996 is when that bulletin came out to make that work kit. And that's kind of tapered that when you install the seal on top of the mass, you're going to spray evenly so you are not cutting the lower spring and can be falling the transmission. So I'm going to show you this in a moment about the video of this uh, uh, seal. <laughs> Now, if you can see here, uh, you can see a double lip seal. Now, if I flip it around, you're going to see the metal, which is the lower spring for the lower seal, right there. 
And that's the one you have to be concerned when you want to put it on it. That's what we need to work it. And the upper lip, you're going to see the upper uh, spring. And this is you have to remember when you're going to assemble it, uh, you have to be careful. That part there is the nut. So when you're going to assemble it, if you want to do it without the work kit, you have the risk that at the lower spring come off and you're going to fall into the uh, bearings. So that's why we're going to have that work kit. This work kit you see here, uh, the function it has is for uh, guide you, help you with the... Um, uh, installation of the double lip seal now even on the new seal you have to use it because the lower the only lip you have on the new seal uh, is going to be the inboard so you have to keep doing it. if you look at it when I press down now you are making sure that this spring is never going to cut off and uh, come off when you install it and you're never going to see that and now you're going to install the retainer uh, and the locking that I will tell you and you're going to align it with the marking I already explained to you and I hope this help uh, for you guys when you're going to install it. Now this part he's showing right now is a bulletin I'm going to explain that you're going to use it with Pro Seal. Uh, you have to be careful when you're doing this. Okay. Now besides this there's belt came out with another bulletin where you're going to use an O-ring in that part I just mentioned right here. You're going to have an O-ring that uh, in order to install the O-ring you have to replace the liner and that is overhaul. And again, all these bulletins are trying to stop the leak on the mass, but it really hasn't been very successful. One of the things you have to remember when you're doing this kind of a job is that uh, uh, between the lower and upper uh, seal, you're going to fill that with, pro, uh, with I'm sorry, with uh, Mobile 28. Uh, it's part of the requirement, so it helps for not. Uh, because of the friction, you don't want to burn the seal. And that's why we put a mobile 28. You are not allowed to use out of shell 22, like uh, it says on the, on the bulletin, okay? So you are not allowed to use out of shell 22, only mobile 28. Uh, I had a customer way back in uh, Australia, and uh, it was very interesting. What they do with this seal, when they got it on the stock room, they take it up from the box, get a container full of mobile 28 and they put that seal into the mobile 28 and they store it. They leave it for month. There's not issue. And when I had that in my class, one of the things they told me they never have an issue with that seal. And what happened is I believe is that the seal, the, the rubber gets impregnated a lot with the mobile 28 that allows a better behave of the rubber against friction and temperature and last longer. And again, that is nothing that Bell tells you to do. It's an advice and uh, it's have in the past a good result. Uh, again, this is for the old type. This is a double lip seal. Here we have finally the latest and greatest seal uh, Bell have come out. The new seal is the 412-340-012-101. This seal, uh, it is a single lip, and it's an uh, inboard, in, inboard, and also it has a, a, a spring, but the spring is going to be inboard. Uh, I installed this seal myself last year, and uh, it's uh, straightforward. You're going to have a marking to tell you this side out, outboard, so you don't have to be guessing what side go in and out. Uh, way, way in the back, in the past, Bell had a... a a seal there was kind of awkward, the, the steel part of it. This one is a straightforward. One thing you have to remember when you're going to assemble this, the plate is going to have some orifice. This orifice you see here, you're going to have different orifice. These orifices are for drainage. So every time you install a new seal, you're going to install it with Pro Seal. When you install it with Pro Seal, you have the risk to clog this orifice. So my advice is you can put a little bit of oil through those orifice so to any pro seal they get caught on it and go in there they're never going to bond to the plate and you can remove it easily when you think you finish make sure you put a safety wire through or some piece of uh, uh, wood through it and make sure it's clear you're going to have different ones make sure all of them are clear of pro seal another thing when you press it all the way uh, you have to make sure that the lower side this part here you don't see any pro seal coming out in a great amount. If it happened, just wipe it off, make sure it's clean, 
And every single time you do anything with Brosil, you have to be cautious and make sure you're never going to get Brosil and leave a Brosil on the lip. If you do that, you're going to cause leaks. Um, Brosil, on this particular case, is going to help first to lock the seal in place, but also help on preventing uh, touching uh, metals of different composition. The, this uh, seal here is made of steel and the retainer cap is made of uh, a plate is made of uh, aluminum so also have the functionality for not create corrosion due to the cement of metal one thing you have to remember as i tell you before bell have to did a many bulletin one of the bulletin they make in the past was rep uh, replace the uh the worst leaf where this seal run into we're going to see later right here you can see a little bit now my point in this uh, point is that uh, if you want to use the new seal, you have to have the new worst leaf right here. Now, that worst leaf, you read the bulletin, it allows you to do it in the field. Uh, be careful. Uh, it's very easy to damage the nut. It's very easy to contaminate the transmission. Matter of fact, if you read the bulletin, it gives you an advice, not mandatory, it's an advice, to do it in overhaul or somebody in overhaul. In order to replace uh, this seal with the new one, the double lip seal with this one, you must also replace the worst lip. The worst lip is different. In this picture, this is something I want to show you. This one, I squeeze everything and finish it up. You see, you see the residue. So what I did, I wipe it off and make sure you don't leave all that hanging there. Proceed have one thing that is against Proceed. Temperature will make the Proceed hard and brittle, and you don't want this piece of plastic or rubber falling into the transmission. Uh, it will not damage any mechanical part, but it can clog passages and an advises not to have it hanging in there. So what I used to do when I press it all the way down, I just come here and I wipe it off. This is a good practice. Also, if you remember hearing uh, talking about the reason why the mass on the 412 is leaking more than the 212, look where the orifice from OJ number A uh, receive the oil, uh, send the oil to the, the bearings right here in the angle uh, if you remember if you you've done this in the path you're going to remember that this retainer plate on the 212 this aluminum i don't know how to put this one here is longer and this is going to start shooting oil like this straight into the barrel remember this retainer plate right now is upside down okay so but here's where they're all coming out so on the 212 is coming through here right into the bolts of the bearing in that way it helps for not building back pressure. Um, this is the, the, the inside part of the seal, and this is the outboard part of the seal. If you look at it, it's very straightforward, and uh, you're gonna see it in here. Uh, you need to look at the, uh, the writing cell this side out. And this seal is kind of different. If you see the lip, then they have some serrations. Those serrations, serrations, it reminds you of a very famous uh, seal called the Feathersburg, used on the 407, also used in many places on the 206s nowadays. Uh, this is not a Feathersburg uh, seal, but the lip doing this will help for cooling and lubrication of the seal. This seal, if you don't have no lubrication on the lip, the friction between the rubber and the worst lip is gonna burn it up. So this will control and help the seal lasts longer uh i'm seeing people like to put pro seal around the edge here on the edge here you can do this but be careful not to block this orifice this orifice has to be open if you don't have this orifice open you're going to have around different places if you have a clock and you have you put the helicopter outside you start making a pothole here and the water uh, can come inside the transmission. So you want to make sure when the helicopter is parked outside range, you're going to drain out all the water. And also oil. When you start getting oil leak, uh, this is what you're going to see this draining outside into the top case 
and then you can see oh, I have a old lick on the mask. Here's something I like to discover you guys. This is a TV for the guys that are looking uh, this videos first time, never work on a Bell product line. TVs are not mandatory. These are for improvement of the product, but they are not mandatory. And this is one of those that a Bell advise you to do in order to uh, stop the leak on the uh, mass uh, seal leak. Anyway, uh, this process were uh, introduced again look at the year and I hear the year is 98 98 right here in which uh, the retaining plate for the mass bearing uh, you're gonna put pro seal all around they emphasize to make sure you put it right in here all around so uh, it's gonna be full of pro seal when you press it on it uh, this volatility have a revision you have to double check make sure you are up to date when you're gonna do this job but this job, if you do overhaul, you know that this is something wrong here. Even when I was in Bell, I was kind of reluctant to talk about this bulletin. Why? Because this retaining tape, this retaining plate have one more function that is very important. This surface here is where you're going to put the shims that preload the outer races. When you sample this with the chins on it, you're looking for one to three thousand pinch. Now, when you're doing this process, you don't have no procedure, you got nothing. And when I take the dimension, what happens if I decide to use one thousand? Now, if I use one thousand and then install this, what do you think that happened with my pinch? It's gone. And what I'm seeing nowadays is that the liner. The other races where the bearings are, they have a very strong marking. They are right, they are moving already. Even when you look at the apex mark, they are not aligned anymore. And this is the reason for it, Pro Seal. So when I teach over hole, I advise the customer use maximum pinch, which is three thousand. Even if you're gonna be doing this, I'm I, I will put 4,000 in here, so you're going to go to 3,000 when you put the pro seal. And again, you have to be very cautious. If you're in the field maintenance side of it and you're doing this bulletin first time, the bulletin doesn't tell you anything. And this is what even Bell I was advising, be careful when you do this on the field maintenance uh, field, not on the overhaul. And you don't know how much pinch the mechanic and the overhaul put in here. If you put 1,000 and you put this in here, Pro Seal, uh, now you're going to have uh, the, the bearings without pinch. So again, even though it looks simple, this has more effect for down the line and it's affecting another part of the mass. So be careful when you're talking or doing anything on the, on the uh, plate. Okay. If you want to look at the bulletin, read over. It's a 412 98 150. If you need it, you want to read over, let me know down. Give me your email and I send it to you so you can read it over. Or, one more thing, you can look at it on the www.bellcustomers.com. You go to this page, it's free of charge. You can go there, you can uh, search uh, ASBs. Other service bulletin, technical bulletin, OSN information letters. Pretty much all the publication bells uh, give to their customer are there for your uh, for you to download if you want it. And here is the one I want to show you guys. Uh, talking about the shims, this plate right in here is where the chimps are. This is the outer race of the bearings. This is the inner races. The inner races are locked in place by the nut. This nut have, depending on the part number, 900 to 1100 foot pound or for 1400 to uh, 1900 foot pound, depending on the part number of the nut. If we teach the overhaul class, we go on detail on this. Now, this is the part I was telling you, the Pro Seal that I was showing you in the last slide was put in here, all around, and it's supposed to be in here. This is the liner. So what I was doing it, when you see this line here, uh, I'm going to install this on it and make a dimension check to see how many shim I'm going to put on it. 
Now, if I put proceed after make a dimension, now this plate is going to be away from the outer races. That's why I'm very concerned that if you're going to be doing the bulletin, I was telling you the dash 150, be careful how much shim is in here. The process to find the shim in here it is for overhaul. This is a very delicate and important bearing on the mast. This is a very critical. This is something that my advice would be only for overhaul people. Okay? So whenever you work on this, you have to make sure how far you reach. Uh, if you are not comfortable with this, make sure you look for help. Uh, and remember, the helicopter have tech support all around the world or even they have an a, a email and phone number to call direct the tech support or their engineering department in Canada. So they are very good with supporting you guys out there. Uh, my experience with Bell was excellent, good product and good support around the world. This picture here is still in the bulletin. Uh, and the reason for this, but this picture is that uh, if you know, if you're gonna be doing this, if you're gonna be doing this bulletin, but you don't have the helicopter, somebody that send it out for pain now, you doing the mass bullet, this bulletin on the mass, but you are not going to put it right away. You have to be careful, Brazil. When uh, what happened with this Brazil become a shim? It's grown space, so you have to make sure when you put Brazil still wet, you want to make sure that uh, if the mass is not going to be installed, you have to make sure you have enough a bolt. Uh, not wash and everything and you want to make sure you install everything and squeeze it you don't want to make sure you don't have a gap here one of the problem if you style the, this cap the retainer cap or plate uh, with the pro seal dry now it become like a, a gasket and guess what no matter what you do here uh, it can cause freeding and the freeding gonna see through here black stuff coming out and that is pretty bad so again be careful every time you do the bulletin dash 150 and you are not going to install the mess you have to do this now if we flip everything around this is pretty much what it is and here's the part i was telling you pro seal is going to be installed on the retainer plate and it's going to be here and this part here is the liner the liner is made of steel this is made of steel this is the liner this is the retainer plate and this is pretty much, of course, when you're going to install the helicopter, you have to remove this bolt. Okay. Now, this is a good practice. This is on the books. When you're going to assemble everything, you install this first, squeeze everything, and then install the four can or sawn screws. What happened in the past, uh, people don't install this by the last one. So what happened is people trying to press this, the can or sawn screw, trying to squeeze this together. Uh, my advice is, when you install this, make sure you press it by hand that you have no gap and then you install the screws. Okay, and but if you want to do this where you are not going to install the mast back in the helicopter, install all a bolts and nuts and hardware, all the, the wash and everything, and then install the four uh, uh, kind of sound screws. Now, this is funny, uh, in a way, this is when people lack training. For some reason, out in the world, uh, every time I've seen this more frequent, it seems like a technical training is the last item on the list for requirement, importance. And uh, ironically, pilot training is still always top item. But this is something that I like to give you a little bit more of a, a um, reflection. Every single time a pilot do training and do an emergency, always he's going to do emergencies that he can recover from. Out of rotation, tail rotor, hydraulic, everything. He can recover from, that's why I keep doing it every six months. But a uh, training department lacking training can create many many fatal emergencies and they don't realize this always technical training is on the bottom of priority and I would like with this video emphasize a little bit about the importance of training this particular video this one when they sent it to me 
in a way it shows uh, the lack of uh, no, uh, training. Sometimes by the question they're asking me, it means they've never been trained. The duplex bearing or single bearing on the 212, 412, they all bearing have a play. Remember, bearings are made of metal. And when they get hot, they expand. So engineering, when they design bearings, they have to have this in mind when they design bearings. So when this bearing is cold, guess what? It got play. And this a picture like a video like this I'm gonna show you, I got few, more than few. People get very concerned when they see this. Even the ground helicopter, they even they send the mask to be repaired where nothing wrong. And let me show you what's going on on this video. Even the break to me, if you look at they move it up and down, that's normal. But not only that, yeah, you got play, but also when you lift it up, it's gonna move sideways, and that is no problem. You see? You see, it moves that way. So this is something you guys have to remember. We go over this when we talk about training on the mass. The duplex bearings, even the single bearing, double truss bearing on the 212 or any truss bearings, they are going to have play. And this is normal. They, this is normal, they have play on it. Uh, again, Training is important, and I hope with this series of videos I'm making, it will guide you and help you to understand or clarify any question or doubt you have in any of the process already done video with. Well, if anything I can do to help you guys, uh, write your comment down here on YouTube. And uh, thank you very much again for your time. Pablo Hernandez with HDI Global. Have a great day. Goodbye.